Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Boris Shingarov. Uh, I write small talk VMs, uh, if, um, as, as many of you know. And uh, today I'm going to be talking about uh, a problem that has been bothering me for many, many years uh, when I write small talk VMs. So, uh, liveness in small talk is this wonderful, wonderful thing uh, that is one of the most defining characteristics of what small talk is. Well, the problem is it is perfect when the actual engine on which you are running is running and you can trust what it's doing. When you're, when you're trying to debug something really low level, like your core classes like compiled method doesn't work, well, you're dead. You don't have liveness and you cannot debug nothing. It gets even worse when you try to debug the VM. Well, when, you, when the VM itself doesn't work, obviously you have no debugger. And then uh, you go to things like you connect GDB to the source of the VM and uh, you don't have the source because it's all jitted code. And it gets even worse when the bug that you're trying to do, uh, that you're trying to solve, comes from some complex interaction between something slightly wrong in the image and something slightly, slightly wrong in the VM, and it's some sort of a race condition, and you never reproduce it in the lab, and out in the field with the customer, the customer gets it only under huge load, and you know, you, you, you try to reproduce the scenario, and, and it never happens. So what do you do? Well, in Java, they tried to sort of solve uh, the problem through this JDWP thing, but that's really uh, only for the low-level problems in the image. And uh, when the VM itself is broken, or the, the, the communication between the image and the VM is broken, then you're still dead. You have to resort to some low-level debugging mechanisms which don't really give you anything. So, I've tried for a very long time, back in the days when uh, Simix was an interesting thing, uh, to implement a debugger that was, co what was concentrating on, on the benefits of simulation. And uh, then Simix is kind of dead, so uh, we migrated it to uh, this new open source thing we, uh, called Gem5. And uh, for the last few years, uh, it got somewhat stable and usable. We used to debug the two uh, VMs that I'm going to be talk talking about and comparing them uh, tomorrow afternoon. And it turns out that uh, the approach is really not predicated on simulation. You don't have to run on simulation. Uh, it's, it's really, it reaches far outside. Um, I'm gonna be showing on some actual physical boards. This is uh, a PowerPC um, SOC that is commonly used in uh, control of uh, automotive a engines. And this is uh, a MIPS, uh, Internet of Thing prototyping machine. Uh, so, what is this universally live debugger, uh, debugger as opposed to the normal live small talk debugger? So it's very simple. You have two processes, and they're running possibly on different machines across the network. So you have your outer small talk, and in this case it's Faro, but it doesn't have to be. So this is mother small talk. And inside there, uh, you have a remote debugging protocol client written in small talk. And 
On the target side, you have, it could be a GDB server, uh, or it could be a, a Gem5 remote, uh, remote server. Well, something that can speak the GDB RSP, remote serial protocol. And uh, the VM that you are running and uh, the image that you are running inside here, VM and image, they have a reified model somewhere in, in Smalltalk. And the debugger, well, the normal Faro debugger doesn't really know anything about what's what's going on and how process and how contacts are implemented. It's just, uh, so this is debugger, and these are the core classes that, uh, that reify on an execution of Smalltalk code. So this is mainly this context and process. So this guy goes here and this. And then in the moldable debugger, you have some plugins that know how to reify on the state of the processor in the target small talk. So this is the target small talk. Uh, so that's, that's the idea how it works. Uh, so what are the goals, right? Well, the first thing, uh, you want to see what, what, what you want to be able to do to discover new things is you want some sort of scope tools, and, and I mean as in like microscope or telescope or you know whatever, right? So, so, so you need a, an instrument that allows you to see inside this thing. So that's one. Number, number two is uh, to be able to experiment with code which is half baked and half of it is not ready. And when you, when you, when, uh, when you are doing a, a live approach, you need an actual system which is reasonably complete to be executing the tools. Well, if, if even the VM is like half-baked, I, I cannot experiment with anything because it's like all or nothing. And I, I, you know, I cannot report to management about where I am in my progress. Uh, I, I am uh, going blind because I'm like, like this, this blind kitten. Uh, so the, the second goal, uh, apart from having a microscope or a telescope, uh, was this, that if I have a model of this in the mother small talk, I can uh, stop whenever uh, this target thing is half implemented and I'm hitting something that's not there. Control can transfer back, this is the model, right? Control transfers back into the model. I modify the sort of virtual state of the target in the way how it is supposed to work, although it does not exist yet. Then I transfer, I, I, I transfer this change in the state back into the target. And then I restart from that point. And this guy is unconscious, right? I'm performing surgery on him. This guy is, unho uh, is unconscious, uh, and, and when I'm done, uh, I'm going to show you a primitive which is not implemented, and uh, I just execute it on this side, and when he wakes up, it, he is at the point right after the execution of the primitive that is not written yet. Uh, so. Start with a demo. Uh, there is. Uh, I'm, I'm going to show you these these two small talks that that I have uh, tomorrow. But this one is is target agnostic mod talk. Is 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 a backend for this fabulous new generation um, small talk for the future that John Sarkel and his students uh, are doing back at um, at MNU. M and M U um, rather. Um, no first demo. And we're going to run this uh, on this MPC 5125. So I have a little um, 
virtual box machine in here. And uh, this thing, the, this, uh, this window is an SSH session into Linux running on that tiny little thing. So you can see that it's uh, a PPC architecture there. And uh, what I'm going to do, I, I have here um, uh, a, this, this uh, thing, PPC, is uh, uh, a, small, a, a small talk executable, actually, with, with uh, ahead of time compiled code that we will inject from the outer, from the outer small talk, and it's written in mod talk. Uh, and uh, we're gonna run um, we're gonna run uh, the GDB server, not any sort of simulation, just standard run-of-the-mill GDB server on that program. And I, I modified the GDB server uh, to show us a little bit of, of interesting things. So just print it out on on the console. And what we're uh, what we're gonna be executing um, in this test is the ANSI tester suite. Uh, so, um, what we will have in the image, we're going to build, we're going to inject a, a brand new, brand newly built image into the RAM on this thing, and it contains an implementation of a reasonably full ANSI Smalltalk image, uh, or class library, it has SUnit, and it has the actual test suite. And I sort of cut it down some... Uh, uh, um, s some of the some of the tests, so we don't really have to wait for hours for all of this to build. Uh, so I'll show you uh, tomorrow how uh, ModTalk itself uh, does this. But essentially, when you hit compile, it tries to uh, compile it and then inject it uh, onto the target. And this is uh, all defined. On so now this is slowly in, injecting it there. Uh, and, and this is all configured um, through, through, through a bunch of configuration classes. Um, and um, then um, uh, it will attempt to run it. And what, happen, what will happen there, we will see on this side. How am I doing on time? 17 minutes. 17 minutes, good. So, uh, yeah, you see it, it does some, puts in some breakpoints uh, because some of the primitives are not implemented in this VM, which is inside that PPC uh, thing. And I'll show you what happens when you hit a piece of a, 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 when you hit a gaping hole in the VM. So uh, that's, uh, um, Maybe while this is injecting, well, it's 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 kind of interesting to 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 watch, but not not really just staring at the progress indicator. Well, maybe uh, I tell you just uh, one thing about uh, while that thing is is going. So where where are we with this? How how complete this thing is? Well, uh, we we are uh, targeting. Uh, two VMs that I'm going to be talking about tomorrow, and uh, they run on a bunch of interesting targets. Uh, on PowerPC, we, we run on the real thing and on Gem5 simulation. Uh, on MIPS, uh, on Spark, on ARM Profile A, uh, ARM Profile M, for reasons uh, that we can discuss offline, uh, is not there yet, and it's fundamentally difficult to do it with, with uh, the approach of uh, how the VM itself is implemented, but this is not really a problem of, of the debugger. It's just the VM themselves, they don't really run on the M profile. And uh, what is really interesting, and I'm going to be addressing that in more detail on the, last, uh, on the next slide after we see the... the um, a demo is that uh, there is a number of really interesting options how we can run on risk 5 with this thing is it done yet it is not
white. So this is injecting the code into the RAM on here. Uh, right, so now it's got a bunch of breaks and now it is actually executing uh, the test suite. And the way how uh, the ANSI compatibility test suite is structured is that it executes all the tests, it uh, uh, collects all the reports from, tech, uh, from test execution and then it just dumps a table of results when, it, when all of it is done. So we will have to wait a little bit while this is uh, going and uh, we will see the, the results. It's, it's, not, it's, it's kind of faster than injecting the code in, into RAM. Yes, and so uh, uh, this uh, portion of, of the ANSI compatibility test suite, we see that, that we uh, got the tests. So, uh, how is it able to, to do when uh, there is no, there is a piece of the VM missing? Well, I'll, I'll show you. So, GDB, this is, um, uh, yes. So, this is the actual code. And, um, Actually, this one. Yes, so we, we get a callback. Um, and um, if I put a halt in here, and uh, we um, run this thing again, uh, we'll just get it to a state, oh yes, I have to uh, restart my GDB debug server. Uh, if we do this again, we are gonna uh, get to a point where it stops. And while this is going on, um, yes, I will talk about the next slide. So. Two years ago in Brescia, I was talking about an experiment, uh, how you can use on-chip debugging circuitry uh, to debug what's going on uh, in a Smalltalk VM. And uh, I was talking about uh, taking uh, the open source, uh, OpenSpark T1, um, very log and um, instrumenting it with a bunch of essentially internal JTAG connectivity. And that sort of didn't work. I mean, I was explaining to you what I was trying to do, but in the end, really, this is sort of a kind of failed experiment. Well, it turns out uh, I didn't really understand how complex uh, such an undertaking would be. Well, uh, fortunately, there is now something, uh, there's now an open source project called Open OCD JTAG, which does all that on, on the chips, and there are implementations uh, for uh, RISC V. So, uh, one of the backends of, the, of, of this universal life debugger is that, well, we don't even really, really need a specific uh, backend because there is code from the open source community that uh, you can have the open OCD uh, JTAG implementation speak RSP. So you just uh, configure the FPGA uh, with, with that circuitry, uh, you um, put a server which implements the RSP protocol, and this unmodified can uh, do um, on-chip level debugging. Now, are we done here? We are not quite done 
here. And this is kind of important, but we will, we will jump a little bit. So this is actually the, li the last slide, and I will uh, give you the rest of the live demo, and we can just look at it, uh, look at it uh, in, in the demo. But uh, so we started with simulation, and then we realized that we don't have to be in a simulation. Now the next question is. Is there still something to simulation that we cannot do unless we are simulating? And uh, the answer to that is yes, a lot. Uh, well, the obvious choice is that, that hardware debug facilities have limitations. That's kind of... Uh, another interesting thing is something that people love, uh, simulators like Gem5, uh, for is repeatability and reversibility. Uh, you can use this for things like bug transportation. So uh, when something is not happening, uh, is, is, is happening for the customer, the, the VM just dies, and you cannot reproduce it uh, in, in, in the support lab or you know, in, in research lab or whatever, uh, what you do is uh, you just record what happened uh, when a guy can actually reproduce the bug, and then you're not running it, you're just replaying. And because uh, the simulator, when, when, when this is, is, is Gem 5, uh, you can just simply replay what happened in the, customer, uh, in the customer environment. And you're just going back and forth looking at what happened. And the other thing is execution is, is actually re uh, reversible in simulation. So if this thing is some sort of network server, and a packet hit from here and caused the VM to crash. And it's a very rare event that really only happens in a big data center under very, very like, specific kind of load. You cannot really reproduce it, and you're like, well, what happened, right? Well, what you do is you uh, record everything that happens into some sort of circular buffer which uh, can be you know, a million instructions or something, like not, not really huge, uh, and it erases circularly. Uh, but uh, when the VM dies, right, when you register, the, oh, there is a seg fault, then you stop recording. And then from that moment, you can go back. And when you are in the small talk debugger, because this is not modified, uh, well, it's one thing when you, you know, you can restart the method from the beginning, right? Like drop the frame, but if the damage is already done, for example, you are smashing uh, status of, of global status of things, or especially when you are involved, well, there's, there's some network, right? Uh, there's packets coming in and going out, and if you're just dropping the frame, well, it doesn't do anything about it. But if you record the state of the whole machine, you're just going, you, you can, like, you know, you, you have, like, jump over, step in, drop, and now what you can have is this unsend, right? Like, get me to the, to the state of the whole machine when the method started executing, and it's going to, and it's going to negate the effect of sending packets on the network. Uh, does it go deeper? Yes, it does. Um, there are non-traditional uh, ideas of, for example, metrics of what the performance of the VM is. And this is really important today if we want to be able to compete against the competitors of small talk. Because uh, we used to just say, oh, well, the VM has to run fast. We used to, to say, well, the VM, you know, it's, it's kind of too bloated if it uh, gets too much memory. Nobody cares. No, nobody cares these days. Uh, you, what, what, what really, the, the, a metric of performance of a VM for a dynamic language today is things like 
does it drain too much battery in my phone? And then you are suddenly debugging things like, well, where, is, where did all of my battery go? And you, and you uh, are uh, posed with problems that, well, the traditional approach to GC doesn't work because GC traditionally is like, oh, well, I have to collect garbage simply because my uh, core RAM is finite. Well, this is not the point anymore. You have to, you, you collect garbage not simply because your core RAM is finite. Well, first of all, you don't have core RAM. What you have is a DRAM. And it is an absolutely different beast because in a magnetic core, you magnetize these little magnets the way, you know, with, uh, according to the patterns of ones and zeros, and they just stay there. And if they are garbage, the, uh, the evil from them is simply they waste the amount of bits available. In DRAM, this is, they, are, they don't just stay there wasting space. They're actively eating your battery because you have to refresh. It's dynamic RAM, right? It's capacitors that discharge. So now, your whole GC algorithms have to be different. Because now people are building RAM with circuitry where the, the processor tells which pieces of the chip to switch off the refreshing. It's not just enough to, to say, well, this piece, this, this piece of memory is, is, uh, uh, is marked as free to for, for further allocation. Well, yeah, but there are some arbitrary zeros and ones in there, and they're still wasting your battery. So now when you're debugging this uh, kind of algorithm change, uh, people have written pieces of GEM5 that automatically analyze where, uh, where you're inefficient in using uh, dynamic refresh. And because the debugger here uh, integrates across the levels of abstraction between the lowest levels of the VM into normal uh, small talk debugging, you, you can integrate that abstraction with these models that care about things like battery consumption. So this is the, what I call the less obvious uh, use of uh, small talk debugging in simulation. Let's see if uh, we hit a break point. Yes, so we got, uh, we got try running, uh, and this is run until two. Um, I'll just uh, step in, and uh, we know that in this VM, R22, is what is the unimplemented piece of the VM? And we just sort of go, and we know, oh, OK, there is an unimplemented primitive that's missing. And uh, we go process primitive, and we can see uh, we're out of time for, for me to show you the actual inspection of the, of the state of the processor in the target. Uh, but we have all the, all, 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 all the little toys with us, so uh, I, can, I can show you. So basically, the idea is that when we process the primitive, what we, right, so this is uh, as done, and we return. And uh, what's happening here is that we go again uh, into the, the run, and we go again run until magic. And that just simply, uh, on the RSP, it just says, it sends a continue packet here. And uh, the actual primitive, it also uses the RSP protocol, and, and it uses the X0 uh, 
packets to modify uh, the memory and the G packets to modify uh, registers. So now it is in a state where it would be as if the implementation of the primitive was complete. And now we just, say, we, we just, uh, um, we just resume and uh, um, the execution of the target goes on. Well, this is pretty much I wanted to say in the presentation. Any questions? We'll save them for tomorrow. <laughs> uh, sure, if you, if you want, but tomorrow there is going to be much more interesting stuff than this. This is preparatory warm up. <laughs> yes? There is a problem in, the, in this case with the Monto VM. How do uh, you guys, how, how do you know, how does the mother Faro image knows that there is a problem there? Is, Oh, uh, the, the target itself knows, oh, uh, you know, like for example here, uh, garbage collection is missing, right? Or, well, uh, that, that particular primitive uh, perform, it's missing. So uh, when uh, execution hits that point, it's just, uh, uh, there is a trap uh, put in, and uh, just, uh, the, 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 there's two ways really. In hardware, um, it is a hardware trap of the processor. And then uh, the supervisor takes through ptrace and it talks back to the GDB and GDB stops and uh, via the RSP tells, right? The, the, the second way is in simulation uh, where uh, the simulator knows where the problem is. You, you tell the simulator, or rather, you tell the simulator, and the simulator knows, well, stop in this place. Or there are magic instructions that I was showing back in Nancy, France, what, five years ago? Or four years ago? Uh, that um, it's an instruction that realistically does not happen in any practical program. And the simulator is watching for this specific sequence of bits in the program text, and it knows that, oh, okay, uh, I have to do this. Uh, I have to talk back to the mother small talk. Any other questions? Well, this is your gift. <laughs>